Hi, Steve here. We all know that Adam was the first man that God made, that God created. And we know that Adam had fellowship with God. I'm gonna say something here that is my opinion based on several other scriptures. If you understand that God can do all things, then it won't be hard for you to understand that he can appear as a man anytime he chooses to. And I believe he has done that throughout history. We read in the very first chapter of Hebrews, in days gone by, God spoke in many and varied ways to the fathers through the prophets. But now in the last days, he has spoken to us through his son, to whom he has given ownership of everything and through whom he created the universe. This son is the radiance of the glory of God, the very expression of God's essence, upholding all that exists by his powerful word. And after he had through himself made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus has been referred to as the Son of God, but also as the Son of Man. I believe that until Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, that Adam actually had fellowship with the second person of the Trinity, Jesus the Christ. I also believe that the high priest Melchizedek was Jesus Christ. The question many people ask is, did God literally and visibly walk in the garden? Well, let's look at what the Bible says and take it at face value. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. So the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. The Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked so I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I ordered you not to eat? That sounds to me like the person of Jesus Christ in the garden with them. And then we have the second account of three people who visited Abraham before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Adonai, the Lord, appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance to the tent during the heat of the day. He raised his eyes and looked, and there in front of him stood three men. On seeing them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, prostrated himself on the ground, and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, please don't leave your servant. Please let me send for some water so that you can wash your feet, then rest under the tree, and I will bring you a piece of bread. Now that you have come to your servant, refresh yourselves before going on. Very well, they replied, do what you have said. Somehow Abraham recognized the Lord, but there was someone before Abraham and after Adam that was introduced to the Son of God. That man was Enoch. This is why Jesus said to the people who wouldn't believe him and the truth he was telling them, but instead accused him of having a demon. The Judeans answered him, aren't we right in saying you are from Shamron and have a demon? Yeshua replied, me? I have no demon. I am honoring my father, but you dishonor me. I am not seeking praise for myself. There is one who is seeking it, and he is the judge. Yes, indeed, I tell you that whoever obeys my teaching will never see death. The Judeans said to him, now we know for sure that you have a demon. Abraham died and so did the prophets. Yet you say, whoever obeys my teaching will never taste death. Abraham, our father, our king died. Are you greater than he? Are you? And the prophets also died. Who do you think you are? Yeshua answered, if I praise myself, my praise counts for nothing. The one who is praising me is my father. The very one about whom you keep saying he is our God. Now you have not known him, but I do know him indeed. If I were to say that I didn't know him, I'd be a liar like you. But I do know him and I obey his word. Abraham, your father, was glad that he would see my day. Then he saw it and was overjoyed. They said to Jesus, why, you're not 50 years old and you've seen Abraham? Yeshua said to them, yes, indeed. Before Abraham came into being, I am. When Moses asked the Lord, what should I say when Pharaoh asks me who sent me? The Lord told him to say, I am. 
Now let's take a look at the book of Enoch, chapter 46. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. Revelation 1.14 says, His head and hair were as white as snow, white wool, his eyes like a fiery flame. And with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of graciousness, like one of the holy angels. The Word became a human being and lived with us, and we saw his Shekinah, the Shekinah of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Shekinah is the glory of God. And I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning that Son of Man, who he was, and where he was from, and why he went with the head of days. The Apostle Peter said, God knew him before the founding of the universe but revealed him in the last days for your sakes. And he answered and said to me, this is the son of man who has righteousness, with whom dwells righteousness, and who reveals all the treasures of that which is hidden, because the Lord of spirits has chosen him, and whose lot has the preeminence before the Lord of spirits in uprightness forever. Colossians 2.3 says, it is in him that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. Are you starting to see the consistency in what Enoch is shown and what the New Testament writers say? And this son of man whom you have seen shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats and the strong from their thrones and shall loosen the reins of the strong and break the teeth of the sinners. This is what the Apostle John says in 1 John 2.23 and 1 John 5.12. He says, whoever denies Jesus, Jesus will deny before his Father. And whoever does not believe in the Son does not have the Father either. And he shall put down the kings from their thrones and kingdoms, because they do not extol and praise him highly, nor humbly acknowledge where the kingdom was bestowed upon them from. And he shall put down the countenance of the strong and shall fill them with shame. And darkness shall be their dwelling and worms shall be their bed. And they shall have no hope of rising from their beds because they do not highly praise the name of the Lord of spirits. And these are they who judge the stars of heaven and raise their hands against the most high and tread upon the earth and dwell upon it and all their deeds manifest unrighteousness, and their power rests upon their riches, and their faith is in the gods which they have made with their hands. And they deny the name of the Lord of Spirits, and they persecute the houses of his congregations, and the faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits. Those would be what we call Christians today, the faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record the witness of God the Father, the Lord of the Spirits, or the Ancient of Days, all titles given to God the Father. Matthew 3.17, Matthew 17.5, Mark 9.7, and 1.11, Luke 3.22, they all say the same thing. Then a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, I am well pleased with you. Then a voice from heaven said, This is my own dear son, and I am pleased with him. This witness of the voice from heaven was recorded five times in three of the four Gospels, and the prophet Enoch was introduced to this beloved son thousands of years earlier. Maybe this is why the Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. His name is Jesus, Yeshua, and there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Think about it. Hi, Steve here. You may have noticed that a lot of the videos can only be viewed on my Brighteon video channel. And the reason for that is simple. YouTube automatically demonetizes the videos that I upload most of the time. Not all of the time, but very much most of the time. This means that few ads will ever show on those videos except the ones they want to show on, which means they make money for the ads that they show. So basically, it's me making money for YouTube and Google. And why is that a problem for me? 
because YouTube is the very platform that continues to censor and shut down many YouTube channels that give the truth and the facts about what's really going on, while at the very same time they allow other channels to continue to exist on their platform, which are immoral, lawless, and really ungodly. But those channels are allowed to stay without any interruption. So for that reason, Every video that I am almost 100% sure they will automatically demonetize, I will post instead to my Brighteon channel. Some people might think, well, why don't you just get off YouTube altogether? Simple. I've already done several hundred videos that are uploaded to YouTube and many of those videos are reaching people that don't know about the Brighteon channel yet. But from this point forward, I'm going to post all the videos to the Brighteon channel I appreciate all of you who support and pray for me. We're in this battle together. It's the battle to defend and fight for our rights that God has given us. And it's been spelled out in the Constitution of the United States. So many people have never taught the history of what it took to start this great nation, so they don't have any understanding of what it might take to keep it. And the globalists and Luciferians don't want people to know. I do, and as long as I'm able, I will be a voice among those who speak the truth. Thank you so much.